June 4th, 1996, the new Ariane 5 take off on its maiden flight from its launch site in South America. Everything goes according to plan until 37 seconds into the flight, where within a split second, everything went from good to horribly bad. In order to understand what actually happened, we need to dive in under the skin and look at some of the internal workings of the Ariane 5 rocket. Inside the rockets are two computers called the Internal Referencing System, or SRI. Why is it called SRI? Well, because it's a French-built rocket and in France, on French, the Internal Referencing System is this. System de référence interne. Okay. The main focus of these computers was to calculate the rocket's heading so that the rocket would know which way it was pointing, where it was, um, so that it knew whether it was off course or if it needed to make adjustments on the fly, as this was flying mostly uh, automated. As I said, there were two computers, SRI-1 and SRI-2. On this particular flight, flight 501, SRI-2 was active. That means that was the one doing all the calculations. That was the one that were being used for maintaining and controlling the rocket. SRI-1 was at what's called hot standby. What hot standby means is it's doing all the same calculations as SRI-2 is. Uh, everything is being calculated just at the same time in parallel but the output from SRI-1 was just not being used. And it is done so in case anything happens, if there's a hardware failure or everything goes wrong with the, uh, with the active one, then the standby, the hot active one, or the hot standby one is ready to just take over like that and just swap over instantly if a, a fault is detected in the, uh, in the active computer. One of the parameters that these two computers were responsible for calculating is something called the horizontal bias. This value uh, was actually mainly used in the Ariane 4. It wasn't really used in the 5, but since they just took the flight software and upgraded it from the 4 to the 5, it kind of makes sense to, uh, to just carry that over so they could use the same software on, uh, on both of them. This parameter was used to compensate for any misalignment in the rocket as it was sitting on the pad. You can imagine if the rocket is tilting like point something of a degree um, of vertical, well, you need to have that value so that you know that you're not starting straight up, uh, straight vertical, and you can uh, compensate for that as soon as you take off. But it also means that as soon as the um, as the rocket leaves the, the launch pad, well, this horizontal bias value is not really used anymore. Just before launch, the ground crew puts the rocket into flight mode. Once flight mode is active, then the rocket is primed, it's ready to go. That's the last thing that happens before it takes off. And one of the things that happens when flight mode is initiated is that this function that calculates the horizontal bias is activated. And by default, it is just active for 50 seconds. No matter what happens, it's just active for 50 seconds. So from when somebody presses the flight mode ready button, um, the rocket needs to have left the pad within 50 seconds, otherwise that horizontal bias value will no longer be calculated. On the particular flight here, the, uh, the rocket took off 3 seconds after the flight mode was activated, so well within the 50 second window. As part of the calculation for this horizontal bias, uh, the SRI computers take what's called a 64-bit floating point number and it converts it into a 16-bit integer number. Now, if you're a computer programmer, you know exactly what this is. And maybe you already spotted where this could go horribly wrong. If you're not a computer programmer, all you really need to know is that, well, floating points and integers are just two different ways of storing numbers inside a computer. An integer can store only whole numbers, but they can do it accurately, where floating points can store a much wider range of numbers and also decimal numbers, but they won't necessarily do it 100% accurate. Another difference between the two is that the 64-bit float can, can hold much, much bigger numbers than a 16-bit integer. And that's going to be significant in just a bit. The Ariane 5 rocket is the natural um, progressive upgrade to the uh, smaller Ariane 4 rocket. The 5 was bigger, could carry more, and was more like cost-effective. This also meant that it was taking a slightly different path as it were going into orbit, where the fall would take a relatively uh, steep, going relatively straight up, of course going banking over as, as we get higher up, 
the 5 would bank over a lot earlier in its flight path and, and go for a much more flat approach up towards orbit. And maybe you're beginning to see where the problem arises here. Because that of course means that the horizontal bias, like how much the rocket is tilting away from vertical, that value is going to be a lot larger earlier on in the flight on the Ariana 5 compared to the 4. And now we begin to paint a picture of what happened. The Ariana 5 took off on its maiden flight, lifts off and follows the predicted flight path. But because it tilts over so more drastically than the Ariana 4 is, and this is by design, remember, that horizontal bias value that was still being calculated reached much higher number. And when this converting from the big floating points down to the smaller 16-bit integer, when the value of the horizontal bias got too big to be stored inside that 16-bit integer, you get something called an operand error or an overflow error, where you're trying to take a number that's too big, but you allocated too little memory to store that number. And the computer in this case just went, I don't know what to do, and shut down. This meant now, all of a sudden, the active internal referencing system just shuts down. But this is fine, because we have a backup. But remember, the backup is doing the exact same calculations, based on the exact same input. So, when SRI 2 failed, it turned out that SRI 1 had already failed 72 milliseconds before it. So now, all of a sudden, you have a rocket without an internal referencing system. And remember that I also said that the flight mode was activated 3 seconds before launch. That means this is 40 seconds after the, uh, the, the flight mode was activated. And remember that the horizontal bias was only calculated for 50 seconds. That meant we were 10 seconds away from the horizontal bias function shutting itself down and this overflow would never have happened. So why didn't they put checks in place for this? How did something like this slip through the cracks? I mean, this is one of the biggest rocket manufacturers and every programmer knows that when you're writing critical code like this, you'd check and you handle every single input to make sure that they are correct and that everything behaves the way that you expect them to before you begin to do any kind of, um, uh, of, of alterations of them. The thing is, they did actually put checks in place, but they were also constrained because they were asked to keep the SRI computers at a load limit of 80%. And that meant during the flight, it should not expect it to spend more than 80% of its resources. And simply because there wasn't enough compute resources, they had to go and pick some things that they need to pull out of the code in order to optimize it to run faster, to reduce the load of the, um, of the computer while the thing was flying. And from that perspective, it seems kind of natural that you say, okay, we need to, to save some clock cycles here. If we have this parameter that's, first of all, A is not even used on this rocket, and B, even the rocket types where it is used, it's only used while the rocket is sitting stationary on the landing pad. As soon as it's lifted off the landing pad, it's no longer in use. It seems like a natural choice to remove some uh, some constraints and some, uh, and some, some, some checks uh, around this parameter, and that was what they did. So after both the SRI computers failed, the rocket had no sense of direction anymore. It didn't know what was up, what was down, or which way it was pointing at all. So the gimbaled engine just harded over to one side, causing the rocket to get into an extreme angle of attack. Once this angle of attack exceeded 20 degrees, and the built-in self-destruct procedure automatically initiated, of course causing the entire rocket to go up in flames. And the resulting debris was spread out over a 5 by two and a half kilometer wide area. After this incident, a number of changes was made in the Ariana test program and also in their flight software. One of them, of course, is probably one that you've been sitting and, and screaming at the screen about right now is, well, why didn't they just stop calculating this value if they didn't need it after the rocket have taken off? And well, that is what they did. They just put a check in place that said, if the rocket is not on the landing pad, if, it, if the takeoff has happened, stop calculating this value. It's an easy fix, and uh, well, yeah, that did off solve the problem. And finally, I just want to invite you guys to come over to this channel's community Discord server. It's a nice place. We have a lot of people both really interested in astrophotography, but also rocket nerds. So if you want to have some uh, some fellow rocket nerds to talk about stuff like this, then uh, then drop by the Discord server. Link is in the description.
However, things went quite badly during the launch. The micrometeorite shield was torn away from Skylab during launch. So in 1980, the Soviets started their own space shuttle program called Buran, and it was intended to be a nuclear deterrent. 